Super cool. I'm looking forward to this match. We're underway, ladies and gents. It's game one on Fountain of Dreams. Let's see what Hungrybox brings to the table that uh, maybe Khaled can take some notes. Khalid. Or Khalid, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Not a DJ. Wrong DJ. Just a puff player. <laughs> but yeah, we're underway. Uh, this is something I was talking about. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh my god. That was that was nasty. See, that was nasty. Yeah. I mean, already like when you do something like that, you it's in your head, right? You have to respect it. But right away, Amsa answering back. Yeah, the big thing I do want to pay attention to in this game, of course, is misrest and or rest trade punishes that Amsa can go for. I mentioned in the Khalid set. He goes for these mix-ups, especially when he has plenty of time, where he changes and varies his fast fall timing on forward airs to force H-Box into a tech trap so that he can get so much more damage off of it. Yeah, really, really, really smart play. Uh, very, very patient as well, but on both ends, H-Box just favoring stage, uh, not keeping things too complicated, uh, just holding positions that are good, and really, really smart play. Okay, traded hit kind of favors Amsa there. He does need to find a kill shortly to even this one back up in stocks. So I did mention this uh, earlier in pools, but one of the things that I always think about with Yoshi, well, well, for starters, are you a Yoshi fan? I am a Yoshi fan. So I kind of see Yoshi as a bit of like, Yoshi is like how guys are like into feet, you know, oh, like God. it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not oh, for Jesus. everybody, you know, like you look at it, like if you follow Amsa, I remember, the, I remember Mango said it's like, following kind of this weird adult content that you're just not into, uh, but then some people love it. So uh, all I'm saying here is that Quentin Tarantino loves Yoshi and uh, clearly <laughs> yeah. she has some other fans. I mean, that, okay, that part's fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> moving on. Let's see if he finds the up air right here. H-Box does drift away in time. I believe he caught jump as well, so Amsa does have to land, yeah. Does he die from that? No, okay. You're crazy for that one. Yeah, I mean, you were, it landed you were a bit in, better in the pool slot, but we were clearly... One. H-Box is up a pretty tremendous amount, all things considered. But Yoshi as a character has a lot of ways to fight his way back. A lot of those do come in the form of trades, though, so he's going to be racking up more and more and more damage over time. If H-Box can close it out with a rest or just really anything, it'd be pretty good for him, I'd say. Yeah, looking for the roll read right there. Um... I like the way Oms is playing this though. Kind of pressure with the nares. Still, this kind of back against the wall, and just hungry boxes looked so so cool. so so dominant. Yeah, really aggressive uh, presentation of hitboxes that Omsa was trying to do on that shield sequence right there. H box laying on so much pressure with the drills. Aerial Yoshi bomb a little bit faster than the grounded one, so it'll allow him to find ledge. He's dead. He's yeah. just dead. Yeah. There's game one. H box showing he's still very very composed, able to kind of. Like, uh, he's a player who's had such a strong mentality for so long, and um, you're kind of seeing why. Like, this is a player who was dominant for 2018, 2019, ranked number one, and even though against Zane he looked a little bit, I don't want to go as far as to say lost, but kind of uncomfortable, against Amsa, it's a different story. Like, 50%? What are we looking at? How many bears does it take to get to the center of Yoshi's double jump armor? The answer is a lot. Oh, my God. But HBox did get a lot of damage. Omsa somehow evens it back up and now takes a percent lead. Oh, another one? Has to wait, yeah, just has to go for an egg toss because of that distance. All right, both of them just kind of zoning each other out. Uh, Hungrybox looking to build the percent, but Omsa gets the first up air, taking the lead. How much can he do with it, though? You know, this is the moment where you really want to build percent, especially against Puff. If you know what you're doing, Puff can die early. As much as that's oh, a meme, that's but so yeah. aggressive. HBox answers back with an upward move of his own. And you know, you mentioned the aggression. This is something that I think there's a bit of a narrative that HBox played really, really defensively. I mean, we're seeing that not really doing that this match. Obviously, right now playing a little bit of the ledge because he needs to get out of the corner. But he has been really kind Whoa. of fighting. Okay, chill. Uh, I like the up B egg from uh, Amsa there to basically cover his tracks when H-Box finds that grab. It forces him to just act out of it very, very quickly. However, I don't oh. believe Amsa had a jump, but it doesn't matter when he can get traded hit kill off the top. Was that an up air? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, kind of hard to see from the camera there, but really, really good stuff. Um, doesn't get the grab. 
This is the moments where uh, uh, Yoshi can look really, really powerful versus Puff. Oh. Is you get a lot of these traded sequences like what we're seeing now, and then suddenly there's just a crazy amount of percent, especially when you look at how much damage Egg does. Yeah. Like, it's like 12 or something. It, it's so much. And that's such a classic uh, jump positioning that Amsa likes to go for against Hungrybox. He'll jump off stage to kind of uh, goad Hbox into drifting in towards center, and then he'll use that super high double jump to up air kill off the top, just like there. And you guys can probably barely hear it, but we're getting the real life melee chats in the crowd right now. Um, you know, chanting for Yoshi. Very, very exciting to see. You know, clearly a lot of Amsa fans. There's the eggs again. They do like 10 every time, which is crazy. No rest happening right yet. There it is. You just summoned it, man. You, you just brought it into existence. And crazy to see from Hbox. Looking for an opening right now. Doesn't get the RCC though. And. Oh, he oh, tried to shield drop big. during that. That's so huge. Still, if you can get an up air from up top, it's over. Like that. But for Hbox. Okay, trying to drift in traded hit isn't going to be enough. Next one is going to be close, though, for sure. Oh my oh, god. Oh my gosh, Amsa. Even in it up like that. One of the things that I always see from Amsa that's so impressive is even now, after Hbox and Amsa have played time and time again, there are moments where he extends kind of a threat that you just don't, like you feel like you're in a safe position, but you're not. We see the wave land up air there, like coming from kind of halfway across the stage, managing to kind of close out the stock. He's so, so good at moving and he's so, so good at like understanding spacing where you just aren't safe. Hbox just oh looked my. confused at something. What? What, what is going I on? I have talked to Amsa about this radar. I asked him after he won Big House uh, 10, if you had a secondary character, who would you play? And he said Falco, but I didn't think he meant it. This is a very, very, very interesting pick. So as a Falco player myself, uh, this is a matchup that I think Falco does very, very well in. Uh, I played Hbox a lot at the pre at Battle of BC, but that being said, like to just suddenly switch to it, this is this is gonna be tough. Amsa's good on FD. Yeah. What? I mean, at the end of the day, even if he's good, he's uh, also good on FD. He's good. With Falco. He's good here, man. Like, I'm so confused. But oh, we're getting the stack, stack it, it up chance. Okay, shake that one off. There is a clear Do you favorite see, in this. Amsa did a little like wave with his fingers. He's like, it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> Keep the good vibes you, going. You have to wonder how long has Amsa been keeping this in the back and why against Hungrybox of all players? Yeah, it is definitely a very interesting uh, pick to say the least. Oh, nice I don't cross think, like, up. Yep. Again, as a Falco, I'm just kind of at a loss for words. It's so <laughs> exciting to see someone who like you really don't traditionally see in this situation. <laughs> oh, gets a grab though. Not gonna get a second one. I'm so yep. looking the Nair kills, he's keeping it either right now. Again, respecting the SDI, instead of going for the Dare, gets the Nair with a bit more range as well. All right, doesn't cover the roll properly, though. Uh, laser right there is going to get you killed there, Amsa. You don't got double jump armor on this bird. I, I really feel like we're witnessing an era where counterpicking is becoming much more in fashion. Absolutely. There's been so many counterpicks. We saw Zane playing Ice Climbers. Now we're seeing Omsa play Falco. That's going to do it, though. Doesn't end up working out, but this may be the beginning of something special. I, I, just, I have to know how long he's been kind of preparing that because he, he said it pretty seriously when I did ask him at Big House, but I didn't think it was something that was going to be built in for most of the year, honestly. I think the Yoshi was just so solid, especially after that Big House win, that why would you change at that point? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing is, it's not, like, I guess the logic is that, you know, you can really aggressively leverage laser there, but we didn't really see uh, Omsa doing that yet, and laser spacing is something that really takes a lot of time to kind of nail down. Oh. So, I know some people kind of looking at that and maybe questioning Omsa's decision, but at the end of the day, FD is a tricky spot to play on. Um, now he's got Yoshi's and other matchups to fall back on, so I honestly don't mind it. Playing the long game for sure, but right now it's the short game, Omsa up a stock. Building up a little bit more damage, perfect Nair right there as well. Jeez, I'm, I, I'm wondering, like, is there like a level of psychic damage that's just happened here where Hungrybox is like, why is there a Falco on my screen? Gets the double jump right yeah, like, there. Yeah, you good, bro? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I don't know. I see. Like this is the thing is sometimes it's like a mental reset too, is you just kind of go, look at the snipe. Mm -hmm. You just sort of say, I, I don't really care. I'm just gonna play Falco. I'm not gonna let you take the momentum away from me. And if I lose, I lose. Like so be it. And now, like we're just seeing Omsa return to form. He's looking so strong. It's almost like the FDA game didn't happen. Need to tech down there. Great okay. drift. Yeah, Good wait for uh, H box to present the aerial right there so we can find Beautiful a safe cancel. Damn. Okay. Hbox deep breath coming through. Wow, um, that was insane pullback from Amsa to not get shield grab right there. Ooh. Okay, off the top two, that is huge. Hbox popping off early. I'm smashed though. Oh, he just doesn't get it. Hbox like really dialed in, looking kind of super intense yeah, right and now. You know wants how this bad set. he wants this. He's popping off stock three. Yeah, we're like literally watching, visibly watching him charge it up. Like, okay, this is a stock trade here, yep. or a stock for Amsa, rather, excuse me. We're in last stock, Amsa to survive. Oh my god, you can see him fishing there, going for the up tilt, but Amsa building up so much percent, not giving it to him. Crowd Amsa chance Amsa, are in force. Hungry Box has so much to prove. Okay, now Amsa playing the center right here. Egg Toss here to force H-Box into an early commit. Then he can't go through the Nair! Kills off the left side! Amsa forces the game five! I can't believe we're going to game five right now. Obviously, we are seeing the Canadian flags in the crowd. Uh, for people who may not be aware, obviously, Amsa a Japanese player, but he's been living in Vancouver, BC, so he's kind of repping Canada lately, and it's good to see. We asked about a taunt to get bodied when we saw Moki do that crazy combo versus Kadoran. Is that the beginning of the end to see Hungrybox do a mid-set pop-off for a star KO? You could visibly see him charging it up. Like, it's like he kind of needs to work himself up a bit just to let out all the steam and uh, looking a little frustrated that he didn't go his way, I guess. He's taking his time, icing him out a little bit. Hbox just counterpicks Ness now. That would be <laughs> so stupid. The, <laughs> amount, I, the oh amount of time I God. watched you process that. Hbox that starting might be all he needs, early. Walt. Oh no, Amsa messes up some tech skill too, so doesn't get a punish off of it. Or maybe nice. he does, just a little bit delayed. Oh. I really like these situations where it's kind of a bit ambiguous. Uh, Hbox able to find kind of trade moments that just end up being a little bit better for Jigglypuff. Already 40%, 47%, now 58, 70. Like, this is looking so good for Hbox. Yeah, and, and again, as a matchup, this does get very difficult because when you just consider things in terms of sheer percentage and stock count, Amza likes to trade hits, take hits in order yes. to find his stock. That's stops. not fair, and he didn't get it. Oh, again. I was going to say that, like, Amsa trying to kind of ramp things up in terms of speed. He's like shifting gears, but in the moments where he needs to be clutch, where he needs to react fast, he's not getting it. This is looking so rough for Amsa. Yeah, and every single time, Hbox just gets to chip in for an aerial here and there, a few more percent. That is gonna be a kill off the top, but he took a lot of extra credit on the way out. Egg to cover his back once more. It really is interesting, like, as someone who kind of is used to seeing Falco laser spacing, the egg spacing is so different. There's moments yeah. where it's like, whoa, whoa, you can't egg there, and then it, like, hits and you're like, oh, I, I guess you can. Like, it's a very, very, very interesting projectile to watch. Looking for the parry, can't get that one. Now Hbox again, like I said, just chipping in slowly but steadily. Doesn't care if he finds the kill at 200 as long as he doesn't take too much damage in reply. All right? <laughs> where are you going? Hbox showing that he's very aware of the role spacing you need to kind of get things going. And look at this pressure, though. Hbox has a super small shield, and that was actually insane defensive play to just continuously roll. You got possible we get a shield break right there. Really good DI out as well to not get into a platform tech chase situation, and he's nailing them with these eggs, but Amsa needs an opening. This, his back is against the wall. Yeah, I think Hbox gets one rest, uh, especially here. It might be curtains. It would be really hard for Amsa to fight this one back. I like the jabs. I like the SDI out of the drill as well. Looking for the up air again. Hbox drift too powerful. Hbox has to reset on ledge to get his jumps back now. So he catches Amsa over committing with the egg toss. A few more damage coming through. Yeah, uh, even an up air is not going to do it. We are on Dreamland. This is why he counterpicked here. 
Ops are just struggling to find the kill, and he's taking just little bits of damage, losing the war of attrition, so to speak. It's it's looking good for HBox, Wall. Absolutely, yeah. HBox starting to get a read oh. on uh, on Ops's kind of drift in patterns off platforms too, and specifically looks out for when Ops initiates that up B, right? Because it's a pretty long move too. HBox can just get one free bear in every single time. We're also seeing uh, HBox embracing a bit of the kind of platform camping style now that he has this lead. Uh, been aggressive most of this set, but he has this advantage. He can kind of just play the lead if he wants. Obviously, I don't think we're going to be going to timeout, but you know, suddenly it feels more possible than it did even just a moment ago. Ops has to play perfect right now for this stock. This is huge. Don't get too overzealous here, Amsa. Got caught out of the jump, landing right there. Yep. Yeah, I think the main game right now is not to take too much percent if you're HBox. He wants to just sort of play it slowly, get extra damage if he needs to, because eventually a back air will knock Yoshi in a situation where he just can't get back. Amsa's starting to slow it down though, right? Getting a little bit of damage right here. Nice, dodging the grab right there. He's playing it slow now. He's playing HBox's game. We'll see if HBox has an adaptation here, but slowly but surely, Amsa is finding chip damage now. This is the thing, you know, you can slow things down, but you don't want to slow things down too much. You know, if you're not threatening your opponent, if you're not making them uncomfortable, suddenly your advantage turns into their advantage. HBox getting a little bit caught, drifting in right there. Bear will not kill, but it does force Yoshi out of the double jump. A desperate Nair to come back. Amsa will fall to last stock right here, oh. but he does get Even an egg on the taking, way out. Taking a little bit of extra damage. This is still looking very, very, very doable for Amsa. Whoever wins this is going to pop off. I can feel it. Strong hit so Nair. Close. So close. All the work he oh. did on stock three. Oh my to do god, it. that's the up air. The exact we position going that I talked about, stock. Radar. He jumps out there. He comes back in, catches with the up air. H-Box is not DIing for it. Now Amsa suddenly has a slight percent lead. It's so back and forth. Oh my god, this damage, Waltz. Pressuring the shield right now. Yeah, H-Box has to roll out. I can't even handle the pressure. Yeah, the rest was almost rest. there. He wanted up till rest. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. We just don't know who is going to take it all the way. Both of them are so patient. It feels like the next opening is going to matter so much. Strong in there, yeah, no reset right there, but Amso's all over it. Up air, no. Okay, but Nair drifts in now. Amsa approaching kill percent on HBox. Up air will probably do it in the next one or two. HBox has to play so careful now. This is so close. Like, oh my god, he missed it. Air He's on right shield. There. Off stage. Go oh my for gosh. The counter. Oh my god. Up here! Not enough in that position. Not Next one certainly it. kills, Radar. HBox taking his time, and so is Amsa. No one wants to approach. Loser is out at fifth place, Radar. What is they're happening? They're careful, but they're not oh playing scared. They're oh dead. Amsa taking it. Moving on. HBox out at fifth. Amsa breathing a sigh of relief, and I am too. Just so composed. Oh my god. Oh my god, my heart. Just hearing the crowd, how Amsa was able to stay composed in that moment, bringing it back for Canada. The Canadians are staying alive in the lower half of this bracket radar. Amsa's gonna take that one, and uh, a nail biter is an understatement right there. I literally feel like a little nauseous. <laughs> like, like, I'm sitting there holding my breath the whole time. I can't really. I don't even know like what's gonna happen. Edge of my seat the entire time. Oh my gosh. The 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 use of these egg tosses. I mean, there is a reason why oh. eggs have gone up in price at the market because oh look at how God. many he's throwing, dude. He finds them off of confirms, he gets free kills off of them, he uses them for positioning to cover his back. Amso is just making such a great use of those egg tosses, man. I can't get over it. I love the inflation joke. Uh man, that was that was crazy. I I think that might be the best set of the tournament so far. I just, I really can't believe how that played out. Yeah, wild stuff. Hey, by the way, guys, Amsa played Falco in that set. Wasn't that crazy? Oh my god, you're right, I forgot. We get a five game knockout oh. set right here, followed by another one here. Cody Schwab up against Moki coming up next. See, that was kind of like a slow burn, and then we're about to kind of really speed things up in a spacey ditto. I think we're going to be seeing constant back and forth stocks taken from both, from both Cody and Moki. But uh, yeah, the Falco, it, it wasn't that bad, guys. Like, it was a two-stock. It wasn't that bad. 
that was just a taste of what we can get for an AMSA secondary. And I got to say, uh, excited is an understatement for sure. I can't wait to see what AMSA brings out for this Falco, what he has in mind. Because Yoshi's just a weird character, man. So now you he just throw in a regular-ass Falco here. You're like, I'm just going to use it as a counterpick character I mean, for my weird guy. Regular ass Falco, a little bit harsh. You know, it, it Not is the I play style. I just, you know what I mean. Come yeah, on, man. It, it, it is kind of, yeah, you think, you think you're getting one thing and then you get another. Um, I, I can't believe that we're just now going to talk about this, but who do you <laughs> think is going to take the event? Who do I think is going like, to take the event? After seeing oh everything, gosh. after seeing how people are playing, um, after seeing Amsa kind of stay composed there, after seeing Moki do the most disrespectful sh number of shines I've ever seen in my entire life, uh, both of which are in losers, it is... I don't know. Like, I mean, Zane is the one who looks kind of, like, unstoppable, mm -hmm. I guess. But even still, like, the composure from Amsa... I, yeah, I'm interested to see kind of... I just, I just don't even know. I, I genuinely don't even know. It's, it's crazy how this tournament has panned out, too. Again, I talk about, uh, you know, just kind of these narratives that have just been absolutely